Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have the situation in Sevastopol where Ukraine again attacked one of the Russian ships. Kind of the interesting one, by the way. The ship is called Kamuna. It is the oldest one in the Russian Navy. Here we may watch the video filmed by the local eyewitness. By the way, he got arrested for this video, so it's very hard to find some of the proofs of what is happening on the Russian-controlled territory, because usually if people film something, they, after all, get detained by the Russian police, and it's forbidden to put everything of that in the social media in internet. But here we may check that the top of the ship really fits to what was on fire out there. Probably not everything was targeted, but just the control room with some of the critical equipment. The ship was modernized many, many, many times. Well, guys, actually this ship is the oldest military vessel in service in the world. It was made in the Russian Empire back in 1913. At first ship carried the name Volkov, but later on was renamed by communists to Kamuna. So why this vessel is in service for such a long time? Well, because Russia doesn't have any kind of the alternates to this ship, it is the submarine rescue ship which was also used to rescue Moskva Russian flagship. As you see, it has a unique construction of the deck with a frame able to sustain a heavy weight of the submarine or something else that this ship might lift from the bottom of the sea. Even though it is old, but it is capable and used widely by the Russian army. Not just for the rescue missions, but for transportation of the submarines if they are unable to move on their own. And with severe damage of the control room, this ship is not operable for a few months. I think that after all Russia will repair it because they need this ship. But what was used to target it? Neptune missile. For me it's kind of the surprise that missile hit that high, usually they hit near to the bottom of the ship as it happened with the Russian Moskva ship. In general, it means that Ukraine started to use Neptunes more actively and will see many more kabooms of the Russian ships, hopefully. There is also a bounty scout on board of the ship, able for search and rescue operations. My friends, just a short break. If you want to support the job that I do on YouTube daily, please join my Patreon team. You may find the link just in the video description below or scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you so much for your kind support. All right, we have some certain good news about Atakam's missiles. It seems like Pentagon was preparing those for transferring to Ukraine. This information appeared in many of the sources. I believe that it could be true. I'm sure that this week the new military bill will be already signed by President and we'll see those missiles in Ukraine, so the vast part of Crimea would be within the range of attackams. We may check out it over here, selecting Harmers and putting attackams, let's say, somewhere in this place. All of the Crimea is within the range of attackams, as you can see, including Sevastopol. It could be the end of the Russian Black Sea Marine Fleet and their military base out here. That's why Russia started to move some of their ships away from Crimean ports. Feodosia is the other biggest Russian military port in Crimea, also within the range. Is it dangerous to go here and launch from the system very close to the front lines? Well, it could be done very, very fast. With a proper conducted operation, Russia wouldn't know. And there should be at least three of the Hammer systems for successful attack. Also, as you can see, the carriage bridge is within the range of attackers. We already know that Ukraine has plans to cut this connection this summer. We also obtained the information that Russia started to reposition their strategic bombers from the Engels airfield further away from Ukrainian borders to Alenia airfield. Hopefully you can see it, Engels and Alenia, but Ukraine already has the drones with a range up to 3000 km, so Alenia potentially could be targeted as well. President Zelensky today said that Russia is planning the massive attack on the Chasif Yar, it's not far away from the Bakhmut city. Their goal is to occupy this town till the 9th of May, when it will be a celebration of the great patriotic victory in the Russian Federation. In general, Russia plans a massive attack on the eastern side of Ukraine using their major forces. They now accumulated those resources for the strike which could happen during the June. Their Minister of the Foreign Affairs Lavrov said about it just a couple of days ago that Kharkiv is the goal for Russia. But for that strike Russia definitely needs many more resources and this time Ukraine will obtain some of the weaponry from our allies. So if this operation happens at some day it would fail.
Zelensky also said that Ukraine has the chance for victory with the new military support, but it depends on what kind of the weaponry we're gonna get. First of all, we need a long-range weaponry to minimize our losses. And one more, Zelensky assured that Putin will enter NATO countries, Baltic countries at first, if Ukraine fails under the pressure of Russia. Now, the main problem for Ukraine is to keep the military support. We're not speaking about the recent bill, but Ukraine definitely should seek for alternative variants, probably from the partners in the European Union. Because if the war continues for a couple of more years, as it is right now, Ukraine should need one more big military package. And the chance for the United States to give it again is close to zero. Especially if there is going to be a new White House administration. The United States of America are going to send their advisors, military advisors, to Ukraine. I'm sure that it is a proper thing to do in our current state, especially when Ukraine receives the military support from the United States. Americans, I think, should advise of how to use that particular weaponry. And partially they take responsibility for it as well. Ukraine sent some of the Patriot launchers to the United States for the maintenance. This is the launcher without missile unit, so here you can see definitely some of the traces and damages to the system. And this photo was taken from the other side by spotters. Well, it's good that those systems will be repaired, but it's not good that Russia is able to reach those with their drones or ballistic missiles. Definitely Ukraine has no weaponry which could be safe against the Russian long-range attacks. But at the same time, Ukraine might strike Russian bases with attack arms, drones and many other stuff. Ukraine has received the L-39 training jet from Lithuania. It's already been delivered, so it's the perfect aircraft for training, but sadly it is useless in combat missions of the modern-day war. So it is a perfect target for the Russian air defense or for the Russian fighter jets. That is why Ukraine will use those for the training purposes only. We have those photos taken from one of the Russian factories. All of those BMPs and tanks are damaged in Ukrainian war or were sent to the maintenance factory because of the poor storage conditions. Many tanks are just rusty and many were just damaged in Ukraine so there Russia repairs all of that stuff and send again to fight. All right, now for the front lines review. Russia still advances in Ocheretina. From what I see, they went to the private sector and occupied the part of the railway. The advancement for today, it's not really big, but it happened. Also, gray area expanded. The northern part is still under Ukrainian control. The fight for this village continues for the fourth day consecutive. Let's go to Novomihalovka, where enemy also advanced, and actually they took all of the Noah Mihalika, so the information from the Russian propaganda, which was spread yesterday, was confirmed today. The fight for this small town was very hard for Russia. If they lost 310 of the vehicle units, it meant that they have severe losses in their infantry. I believe more than 2,000 soldiers in this case. Because some of the Russian midwaves are not just with vehicles, they also send soldiers walking directly to Ukrainian positions. But as you see, they still achieved their goal. They sent reports to Putin. Okay, we occupied Novomihalovka and Putin is happy. He doesn't care about Russian losses. Also, Russia not just advanced in Novomihalovka. We have the update for all of this region on the south from Novomihalovka. So it was yesterday and it is today right now. So yesterday and today they occupied quite a lot of area, many of the fields. I would say that this area is the same as the village of Novomihalovka itself. So Konstantinivka is the next hot spot, unfortunately. Hopefully Ukraine has some sort of the defense. Unfortunately, we are out of the tools to prevent the Russian advancement in the nearby future. So Russia will continue their strikes and advance again and again with heavy losses, but they might take some of the towns and villages under their control. If everything goes well for Ukraine with a new military aid, I think that our army would be able to stop the Russian advancement somewhere close to autumn. And Russia also sent the foreign mercenaries to the most hot spots on the front lines. They want to utilize them fast because they don't want to pay a high salary for mercenaries. 
so midwaves are now looking like that for Russia. They are able to find stupid people who are fighting for them. Now let's go to this area near Donetsk airfield in Peromaiske. So today Russia also advanced from this village just a little. And here Ukraine still has forces which I think should be withdrawn from the place very soon because they are under the risk of being encircled by the Russian army in this place. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.